actually say any of that. Blair didn't seem to win over any of his critics with what he did actually say. In fact, it seemed no one was convinced by his performance. I say no one. He did have one vocal cheerleader who turned up for a cosy daytime chat on the daily politics. I've always been deeply suspicious of received wisdom. If you get up close to it, it can have a distinctly fishy smell. A bit like a yeast infection. To accuse a serving Prime Minister of lying to Parliament, to the world, about Saddam's weapons of mass destruction is an incredibly serious allegation. I don't even believe it for one split second. Oh, well, that's that settled. Right up until the German V weapons began to drop on London and the South East in 1944, the British government, led by Churchill, didn't believe in the existence of those weapons. But you didn't see Churchill hauled up before an inquiry in 1946 or 47 or 48. They accepted that it was a genuine mistake. Hmm, this isn't so much an argument as a series of flaws held together with consonants. It's also important to remember that governments do use spin to take their countries to war. The 45-minute claim was a classic example of spin, but look back at some of Margaret Thatcher's speeches that took us into the Falklands War. Spin City. Jesus Christ, what are you going to do next? Question the nature of knowledge itself? I'm always astonished at the blunt certainty with which some people say that the war was illegal. How can they really know? International law is incredibly complicated. But at the end of the day, if the Attorney General, however many times he may have changed his mind, comes down on the side of legality and tells the Prime Minister that, who's to argue? Ladies and gentlemen, the death of satire. When a former Prime Minister needs a former daytime host to defend him, it's fair to say the balance of power between politicians and TV is all out of whack. Not that MPs need to be accused of war crimes to look bad, they all look bad on the box.